dependent. His ban will be dependent on what he takes first. Takes out the Gurkha. Interesting choice here. Did not know Falling Flower had a Gurkha, but of course Gurkha is probably one of the most powerful units. It is the most powerful unit in the game on Seishi Zou's tier list. So obviously it makes sense that the Gurkha is taken out. And of course Gianna, one of the most powerful units in the game, should be glancing on skill 3, please. Uh, Pre-banned by Falling Flower. <laughs> Definitely some good pre-bans here. You can tell Zephyr has done his homework with Gurkha and Gianna pre ban Masha being the first pick coming out of Zepha. Zepha looking to be very aggressive. And Falling Flower, as he should, be taking his time. Yeah, and I think Zepha here with the Masha is a no-brainer first pick here. And the Wusa and the Moor makes a lot of sense. I, I'm not sure about the, the Wusa here. I think that's a little bit preemptive because Zepha can go in with aggression and probably overpower him damage. And that's exactly the path we're seeing. We're seeing a wind unit of Sierra, which is going to be very good here. And we see a Miles, which does a lot of damage. And I know Zepha has great wins. This is going to be a really powerful Miles. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a powerful Miles indeed. I love that Zephyr was able to lock in that Miles. It's so good up against that Masha. So taking a big unit like that away from his opponent, Falling Flower, is definitely a big moment here. We've got Light Monkey King being drafted by Falling Flower. Yeah, of course. When you have a Light Monkey, you have to throw that unit down. I think a Chung Pung's coming next. No, he goes with the Riley. Not sure about this because that means his last pick needs to be an impactful AoE unit that does damage or a Molly or something that lets him hang on. It's, but Zephyr has two more picks left, so it's going to put him in a rough spot. I think Zephyr is best suited to go full damage here. Probably some sort of either Esna, Barbara, or I could even see a Cadiz coming out. There we go, we see a Cadiz, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a Juno coming out. Juno would be a very good pick uh, into this set of units here. We'll see if Zephyr decides to go with that, and that's exactly what he lays down. Nails both calls. Cadiz and Juno being drafted here. Falling Flower bringing out the hits it. I was not expecting to see that as a last pick. Definitely not expecting to see a Hurtate there. And, and obviously, he, you know, Falling Flower is trying to go for a long match. I'm not sure about that Hurtate pick here. I really favor Zafarius' draft here. We're going to see a unit being isolated by Zafarius, and he's going to be able to run the table here. Uh, it's going to be dependent on Falling Flower's ability to stay alive in this match. Most definitely. Let's go! We've got Falling Flower and Zephyr and Miles kicking it off with a beautiful first turn stun on that here tip. Yeah, beautiful first turn on that here tape, but when you look at Falling Flowers team, you look at where is the damage coming from? How is he going to beat his opponent? And I don't have an answer here. Unless he procs a million times, I don't see a, wee, a way he's going to win. Zephyr has so much damage on his side here. I don't think Falling Flower has a, a chance. Now, Falling Flower is trying to pump up that here tape as much as possible. He's able to cleanse it here. He's going to be taking a turn here. He's going to do that magical passive there onto the Ciara. Yeah, Heretic does take a long time to ramp up, though unfortunately that Juno whiffs on so many debuffs, so that's going to be a big difference maker here. Uh, Zephyr might be in a little bit of trouble, but that Heretic is still kind of squishy. Yeah, Zephyr's still kind of squishy indeed. Bomb does land on top of the boost, and you can see he's trying to pummel in that damage on top of the Heretic. Let's see if he chooses to use any skills. Does not, even though the immunity is still up on that Heretic. Yeah, so it looks like Zephyr has learned to hit the auto button here. It's just tunneling that Hurtate, exactly what he should do. Uh, Falling Flower is going to need to hang on for dear life because once that Hurtate goes down, he's got, his only source of damage really is that more, and he's going to need to heal to stay alive. So, so far, he's ramping up that Hurtate very well, but that Hurtate is going to need to carry him through this match. Ooh, there's a nice little additional turn trying to steal the immunity and gets that immunity as well. Zephyr still trying to pummel the damage on top of that Hurtate. Yeah, but you see, even though that Sierra has been reduced, that's a big proc from that Miles. As I talked about with RNG, Zephyr has amazing RNG, is able to take out that hair tape with a proc from the Miles. It was a perfectly timed proc, able to drop a unit, take it away from the field, putting Zephyr at a one unit advantage. Putting him at a one unit advantage and about to be a two unit advantage here as Wusa is locked down. Uh, Zephyr just has so much aggression coming out and I'm not sure Falling Flower has anything he can do about this. Yeah, Masha's got second skill, looking for a defense break on top of Lusa. Doesn't receive it here. What are you praying for the Despair Stuns? No Despair Stuns coming out here. Any two-turn sleep possibly not going to be happening here. Big skill two does not stun up the Lusa. And just so much attack bar. And additional turns coming out from Zephyr. Massive additional turn here. Allows him to lay down that bomb, take down that Moor, stun that Moor here. And that's a lot of damage coming out from that Juno. As we talked about, that RNG from Zephyr just so good in this matchup. Oh, he's just pulling the damage. Wusa getting stunned up here. Miles trying to take out that more. More with the dot that will die to it, but he knows that Zephyr taking round one away from Falling Flower. 
Wow, what a match there. But, you know, as we called it, you know, when you look at Falling Flowers draft, you look at where is the damage, where is the threat. It almost looks like he's picking a team that he just wants to sit back and hit auto with. But, you know, you come to SWC to actually destroy units, to take a unit out. You don't come here to hit auto and kick back and just watch the game unfold. So I'm very surprised by that draft there. Obviously, when the Light Monkey's out, he has no threat on the field. And when you look at Zephos, there's five damage dealers there. It's just too much to handle. Zephos very well ruined, and, and no, no surprise why he took that match down. Yeah, most definitely. Well, hopefully there's going to be a change of pace getting into round two here. Pre-bans have already been locked in. Tian, uh, Tian Lang, Light Monkey King getting the ban, and Cadiz getting pre-banned as well. Yeah, and we see that Masha first pick makes a lot of sense here. Uh, Zepha does have the ability to go Oliver, but obviously when you're facing a Masha, that's not something you want to take. Does go with the Gianna and does go with the Shizuka. So very interesting picks here from Zepha. I think that makes a lot of sense. And Falling Flower wastes no time with his next two picks. Yeah, very, very quick to locking in that more and the Gurkha as well. A lot of people excited to see this Gurkha. We've seen some crazy things happening with this unit. And I think Zepha almost has to go in assuming he's banning that Gurkha because once Gurkha goes off, it basically dominates the entire game here. As it stands though, he could choose to also ban the Moor as well. Zepha doesn't seem like he's very scared of that Masha. Laying down the Bulwark and the Riley is kind of an interesting pick. Definitely letting that Masha through at this point. Yeah, very interesting picks indeed. Hey Gang and Cigar getting uh, drafted by Falling Flower, wrapping up his draft. Yeah, so when you see the Cigar lay down, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Shizuka taken out. That's what he's kind of angling towards. But he's definitely not taking out the Gianna when you lay out the Moor and the Shizuka like that. Miles as a last pick makes a lot of sense here. I still think the Gurkha needs to be taken out just because it's an X factor that's dangerous. But I could also see a weird world in which either the Cigar or the Moor is taken out. And that's, that was, that's what we see here. That's exactly what we're going to be seeing here. We've got Riley banned and we've got Cigar banned. Speed lead coming up for Fallen Flower. Let's see if he can actually turn it around and get that prediction right. Does he take a match away from Zephyr or is Zephyr able to hold on for one more match? We'll see what happens here. Zephyr has a lot less damage on his side of the field. So maybe Fallen Flower is going to be able to snipe out a unit or be able to get this Gurkha in a position to win the game. Well, didn't get the full strips with that more. A little bit of damage getting poked onto the Gianna. We do have a Despair Stun going out onto that Gianna as well. Yeah, that Gurkha does not land that Provoke on the Mile, so pretty big miss there. Uh, but again, this this Gurkha is very tanky. It has a long time to get going. Uh, Zephyr here has a fully stacked up Bovark ready to go. He needs to be able to launch this onto the Gurkha and take the Gurkha out. And that's going to be his window of opportunity. Yep, it really is, and Fallen Flower is wondering where his provokes are at. He's just not getting them with that Gurkha, and Gurkha is going to be in a lot of trouble here. Another additional turn coming out of Zephyr, able to take away units here. It's just so impactful to be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's just so impactful to be able to proc on command here, and just Zephyr is just out of control, takes out the Gurkha, takes out the main threat, and there we go. That's the end of the game. Quick concede by Falling Flower. Massive 2-0 for Zephyr, taking out Falling Flower and locking in his position. Wow. Again, just immediate victory here. Congratulations, Zepha, booking his next step towards the preliminaries, getting the win, and a great, great job there. Again, we were like, this is a big, big toolbox for Fallen Flower. He has a lot that he can do here for Fallen Flower. Maybe Zepha won't be able to do anything. Maybe he's going to have to do it off of luck, a 2-1. It's a 2-0 here, make it a bud.